to another Top 10 Dark Ride Dracula list. On this episode, the Top 10 Classic... Horror Host Songs. Horror Host Songs. There were so many great horror hosts back in the day. Unfortunately, yes. very little survives from those days. Yes. You know, and I, I always look for like more and more and try to get as much as possible because I mm-hmm. love seeing that stuff and revisiting it. And a lot of those horror hosts had great theme songs or songs that they recorded themselves. So we decided to come up with a list of 10 of the very best of them. So at number 10, what do we got? That's going to be Papa Ooh Mau Mau by the Rivingtons. Yes, this one right here. Now this is not, this is the one glaring omission thing on here because it's not technically by a horror host or about a horror host. It's just one that a horror host used to use a lot on his show. And I wanted to give some love to the infamous Goulardi from Cleveland, Ohio, back in the 60s. I mean, what a great character. I know Lux from The Cramps was a huge fan of Goulardi, and a lot of his influence came from that, as well as other people. But Goulardi was just, like, great image, great look. Mm -hmm. I I love that, and he used to use that on the show, that classic from the Rivington, so I wanted to at least give Goulardi some love here. So there he is at number 10, Papa Umau Mau, which was a song he loved and used on the original Goulardi show from the 60s. Brings us to number 9. At number 9, one of my favorites, and not the only time he's going to make it to this list because I love him so much, and that is Baron Damon with Ghost Guitars. B-side to another song that's going to be on this list. I love Ghost Guitars. It's this <laughs> great it's instrumental with great guitar playing. Like, that's one thing about that record is just like, both of the songs on there, the guitar playing is just fantastic. It's like, it's almost flamenco-ish. Like, oh, there's, yeah. a lot okay. of, like, there's a lot of great, great guitar work in there. I love both sides. I had to put both on this list. I had to. It's my show, so I'm going to do that. We're gonna do it. Baron mm-hmm. Damon was a horror host um, up in Syracuse, New York. He had a show, Baron Damon and his buddies. His <laughs> bloody buddies. Bloody buddies. If you were in his fan club, you were a bloody buddy. That's How cool cute. is that? He was a vampire. And uh, 1963, he put out one single, and this was it. It was on the WNYS label. It's it. It's the only single he released, and it was only issued one time. Tough to find. Great song, Ghost Guitars. Coming in at number nine, brings to number eight. At number eight, what do we got? We're going to deviate a little bit from our classics, just because we can't leave her off the list, and that is Elvira with Two Big Pumpkins. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you can't make a horror host list and not give a little bit of love to the mistress of the dark, Elvira. That one, she put that out back in 2014, so that would definitely be the newest song we'll ever yes. talk about. She's had records and stuff yeah. going way back to her career, which started, uh, I think, 1981 was when she debuted on television in Los Angeles on uh, El- Elvira's movie, Macabre. And so, I, I mean, I love classic Elvira. You know? Yeah. I do. I mean, she's, she's an icon. She really is. She's up there with, you know, all the other spooky ladies in terms of like icon status there's a reason for that she you know was able to transcend decades yeah you know just goes to show you that the goth girl aesthetic never goes out of style always everybody's (laughs) always gonna love two big pumpkins everybody always will and hers are infamous well i mean you think there's a mouse pack of them right (laughs) you had vampira who is the original dated james dean yeah. I mean, who's a bigger deal at that time than James Dean? Likes his goth girls. Elvis also liked Vampire. Yeah. So there's something to be said about goth girls going way back. I know modern times would like to lay claim on that, but it's a much, much older thing than they'd like to acknowledge. There's always been... I mean, and there was other ones, too. There was Vampire, who was the first, the original, mm-hmm. the creator. And then there was other ones, Tarantula Ghoul. I mean, there's been several that, that came along in between here and there. And then Elvira just took it and ran with it and totally, you know, turned it into a Wrapped it all up into one package and became a superstar. Yeah. And I mean, there's literally Elvira boob mouse pads. So what does that tell you? You can click it. It helps your carpal tunnel. Two big pumpkins (laughs) coming in at number eight. You have two big pumpkins. 
you know, all right. So Maybe be, not quite on Elvira's <laughs> level, but I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> There's still time. All right, brings us to number number seven. At number seven on the list, Tarantula Ghoul with Graveyard Rock. It all begins about 12 o'clock when the graves all open and we start to rock. Graveyard Rock. Tarantula Ghoul and her Grave Diggers is what this single was released mm -hmm. at. This is the B-side to a song called King Kong. Um... But Graveyard Rock is the one she, she's known for. That mm -hmm. one, for some reason, has always wound up on all the Halloween comps and the mixes and stuff. She also was a horror host back in Portland, Oregon, back in 1958. She hosted in a great name for a horror show, The House of Horror. I mean, that is... <laughs> it makes me think Dark Rides, yes. you know? It makes me think Rocky Point with The House of Horrors and just, and mm -hmm. you know, Tarantula Ghoul. What a great name for a horror host. And, uh, yeah, I, I love it. Great classic song, too. Tough record to find. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes the B-side's better than the A-side. This is one of those cases. Graveyard Rock from Tarantula Ghoul and her Grave Diggers from 1958 brings us to number six. What do we got? Let There Be Fright by Dr. Shock. These demons rose from the dead. It's the mad Dr. Shock. I love Dr. Shock. Dr. Shock is awesome. I love Dr. Shock. Short career, but... Just, he hit all the right buttons with kids. There's still mm -hmm. kids who, you know, and I mean, that's before my time. And I picked up on Dr. Shock, you know. I This was the record I heard first, Let There Be Fright, um, was released, you know, as a seven-inch single. And I just, I was like, what is this, you know? At first you're thinking it's going to be like ACDC. I think that's what I first thought when I saw her. <laughs> I was like, Let There Be Fright, Let There Be Rock. Because like, you it naturally just, just kind of hear it in your head. Like, <laughs> that's what I thought. Yeah. And I listened to it, and I liked it, and, you know, investigating Dr. Shock. There's very little surviving Dr. Shock footage. There is some, thankfully, because one of the people who worked on the show saved some footage, and thank God that person was smart enough to archive this. Because, like I said, in the case of a lot of these people, there's so little footage because they were just aired live on the stations, and then the footage was just lost to time. Dr. Shock, there's not much. But there is some, and I highly recommend you go watch it. And he released a super rare record, he mm -hmm. tried doing the Monster Mash. He has Dr. Shock's Monster Mash, which is an insane record. That, like, it's, it was supposedly a TV commercial for that mm. record. I've never seen it. If you have it, please send it to me. I would love to watch that. Mm -hmm. um, but it was released through television. Supposedly only like 500 copies pressed. Super tough to find. Uh, worth like four figures. Crazy record. Um, Dr. Shock. But his Monster Mash doesn't live up to the original. Mm -hmm. Neither does that. I'm sorry. What are you going to do? But I love, love Dr. Shaw. You know, passed away young, 1979. Uh, I could go on. But I love this song. Let There Be Fright. At number six. That brings us to number five. What do we got? Is this me? Mm -hmm. It's me. <laughs> All right. You're at number five. I'm at number five. <laughs> Chili Billy's Vamp. From your dreams to the blood curtain screams. This one, 1971. Chili Billy, he did his own song. Bill, I'm not 100% sure how you say his last name. I think it's Cardile. Okay. If it's not, then it's probably Cardile. But he was a <laughs> Pittsburgh horror host. Um, this record right here has my favorite label ever. Mm -hmm. The actual label of the record. Um, closely followed by Tony and the Monstrosities, Igor's Party with the Crypt Records and the yeah. Skeleton. I mean, I love that. But this song right here... Chili Billy's Vamp was released on Vampire Records with this great hot pink bat, I mean a hot pink background with the black bat vampire written in the cool font. It's my god. Like, so cool. <laughs> and then just looking at that record, it's yeah. like, wow, like what a, you know you're going to hear something cool when you put this mm -hmm. on. And you put that record on and it's just this like great, cool, spooky theme song like it's cool. <laughs> I don't know how else I can explain it's cool. it. It is. It's, it's, Check it out. It's a great, great song, with, but that label just sucks you right in. Yeah. Like For me, that's my number one favorite label I've ever seen on a record. It's just like Vampire Records, Hot Pink. I'm all in. Yeah. And he was a you know classic horror host, a legend. He hosted Chiller Theater um, back in you know Pittsburgh. He's, there's even Chili Billy Day. And actually, the day we're recording this right now today is actually... Chili Billy Day wow. in Pittsburgh, Bill Cardale Day That's in amazing. Pittsburgh, which is pretty incredible. Um, he was an icon, and just, you know, he's Pittsburgh's horror host. I mean, Chiller Theater, 
Come on, that's... What's bigger than that? What's well, better than nothing. I wish I could have lived in that time and been just, you know, to be a little kid, turn the TV on and it's a black and white TV and there's Frankenstein and there's a guy dressed as a weirdo vampire monster guy telling you like, oh, oh mm -hmm. God, I'm all in. Chili Billy's Vamp, 1971 and number five. Bring us to number four. What do we got? Dinner with Drac by Zachary. A dinner was served for three at Dracula's house by the sea. The orders were... Zachary. He's so great. He... He's going to be on the list placed. Yeah, Zachary. My God. I mean, just... Yeah, he's the king of it. <laughs> the fucking, he's like one of the... The, ho the cool yeah. ghoul, the host of shock theater. I, you know... I, I met Zach a bunch of times. He was he was a staple of, of going to Chiller Theater. I mean, mm -hmm. the very, you know, he was a, a staple of that convention. And just, you know, you always saw him, and he was always cool. And, and even into his later years, you know, he always had that big laugh, that mm -hmm. iconic Zachary laugh that's just like... The best. <laughs> the best, man. It's like it's up there with Vincent Price for me, yeah. you know? I mm -hmm. love Vincent Price's laugh. Zachary had the same type of thing. This just you could hear just him laugh. Yeah. You could hear like him outside, that. you know, you'd hear that <laughs> laugh and be like, what that I know that laugh. It's Zachary. You yep. know, it's just yeah, I love it. What a nice guy too. Great guy. Um, he used to hug me every time I saw him. Aww. I've got a I've got a video where I did an interview with him and at the end he gave me a big monster hug, I guess. Aww. A little thing. I, I love Zachary. Great guy. Love him. Dinner with Drac, though, that's the iconic song he's, I think he's most known for. Yes. He's got a bunch of records, a bunch of stuff. He, he's got a, he did a lot of music, Zachary. Um, but that one, I think, is that's the one that put him on the map from 1958. And that's the one that I think, when you think of a Zachary song, mm. you think Dinner with Drac. So there it is at number four. Brings to number three. At number three on the list, this one going back to 1959, Morgus the Magnificent. On Saturday night, when I go for my date, my baby and I just sit and Done by Morgus and the Ghouls. Morgus was a horror host out of New Orleans, and um, he hosted the House of Shock. The House of Shock. What a great name! <laughs> I the love House that. of Shock. I like if you put that on, if you, if you like saw that in a TV guide, the House Definitely of Shock. You're like, I'm gonna watch this. Definitely. I don't even care what happens. <laughs> I'm gonna just watch whatever this is. And then that guy comes on, and Morgus was just crazy looking. He looked like a mad scientist, mm -hmm. you know? And the song, all right, the song is doesn't have a lot of words. It's very Morgus basic. Morgus. <laughs> yeah. We don't go out to, you know, roll and rock. We get our kicks from the House of Shock. And that's it. There's a couple more. He, he mentions he's got shaggy hair. I mean, oh, but yeah. there's not a lot of words. It's a very Free basic lines. song, and you know, but it's... Cool. He put out a bunch of other music, too, that you can check out. But I think that would be the one that is the most yes. synonymous with his show. The theme song, Morgus, the Magnificent. You know, love it. All right, brings to number two. And at number two on the list, what do we got? The queen of all horror hosts. Yes. Vampira by Bobby Bear. I got a woman, she's six foot three. Ooh, buddy, what she doing to me? She got a love and it's... Vampira, that's your girl. Vampira That is, is your girl. The horror host. Yeah. And everybody else came after. She was just she was she wasn't afraid to be weird and creepy in a time where that was just so taboo and so unexpected. And she just owned it. And she was Vampira. And I think that without her, where would all these horror hosts be? Yeah, she opened the door. She you really know, did. she really did open the door. There is the beginning, and it's Vampira, and then there's everything that follows suit afterwards. And even though a lot of people went in a lot of different directions with horror hosting, you have to give it up to the original, you know, and pay, pay homage to the original. Some people should pay a little more homage, if we're being honest, but uh, <laughs> Vampira just, yeah, I mean, she set the bar, and the bar is set so high yeah. that even to this day, here we are, Decades and decades and decades later, and there's so little surviving footage of the vampire but it's show. But still the coolest footage. But when you see it, Ever. it is done so mm -hmm. perfectly. When she comes just like gliding down the hall. No one did it with better. With the smoke. And I mean, you gotta figure, like, there's no, like, special effects back then. No. This is just, you know, this is all real. This is all, like, the set was created. Yeah. All of this and, you know, her scream and her... 
you know, just her That's little it. quirky jokes were just... Yep. She, she started it all. The scream, the look, the mm -hmm. image, the voice, the mannerisms. I see that even to this day. I see people trying to replicate what she created and just... Cannot be done. You know, it's, it's perfection. She perfected it right from the get-go. And while there's a lot of other people that have done a great job with it, mm -hmm. the original is untouchable. And I wish more footage survived from The Vampire Show, which aired in Los Angeles back in 1958. There was just, you know, they didn't save stuff back then. It aired live, and that was it. There's a handful of kinescopes that still exist, thank God, so you at least have something, something and you can still see what was going on. But, uh, yeah, just incredible. And Bobby Bear, just to, you know, mention who actually did the song, mm -hmm. The Misfits oh, also yeah, yeah, had a song, Vampire, as well, which is the big vampire song. Everybody yeah. knows Misfits Vampire. That is the song that everybody knows and associates. But Bobby Bear did it first back yeah. in 58. He's the one who did it. Like, and he was, and that's her era. So yeah. it's like this is a song released in her time, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. You know what I mean? And Bobby Bear's still with us, still alive, still making music, and still a country icon um, who did the first vampire song. That's true. So there it is at number two. It brings to the number one spot. At number one, this one right here, I mentioned them earlier on the list, and I love this song so much. And to me, this is the quintessential horror host song, Baron Damon, with the Transylvania twist. Grab a hold of your baby, hold her tight, because Baron Damon is flying tonight. I love it. Baron Damon, a horror host out of Syracuse, New York. Like I said, he had a show, Baron and his buddies, Bloody, Bloody buddies, buddies, if you were in his fan club. And uh, just, wow, just so, I mean, there's, there's thankfully some footage that still exists, not a lot. Again, as I know I've said throughout this whole thing, there's just such little that it's, it's precious little, it's like my precious, you know, it's like <laughs> the precious little nuggets um, that I'm so glad that at least something exists so I can get a little, you know, sample of what it was like. But, um, yeah, what a, I mean, cool looking, there's a live performance of him many years later performing the song on stage. And again, I know I said it before, but the guitar work and this song is just next level. Like, the musicianship in this song, and, and on both sides of this record, is like nothing I've heard from that time. It's just fantastic guitar playing. Little flamenco, little surfy. It's, it's some top-level musicianship going on, and especially in the guitar. And a great song, classic, underrated Halloween anthem, belongs on everybody's Halloween playlist, for sure. The Transylvania Twist from Baron Damon at number one. That's going to do it for us. What horror host song would you have put on the list? Let us know. Put it down there in the comment box below. We'll see you soon for another episode here on Dark Ride Dracula.